We do want to welcome everyone who is worshiping with us on this Epiphany Sunday. A special welcome to folks who are worshiping with us online. If you're worshiping online, do give us a like or a comment so we know that you are worshiping with us. And we do want to welcome folks to worship here in person. It is so good to be able to be together on this snowy, wintry day. Thank you for braving the elements this morning. Today in worship, we do have our council installation. So we'll be installing our 2024 council. I'm so grateful for all those who volunteer to serve. After worship today, we do have a calendar planning session. Um, and so you're invited to stay after. We've got a little kind of worksheet on the screen that we're going to work through to share some of our ideas for what we would like to see happen this year. Um, individual groups are working on their own calendars too, so hopefully by the end of January we'll have those in place and can compile kind of a master calendar for the year so you have an idea of what all is going on. So hopefully you can stay after worship today for that. Monday evening at 6 p.m. in the Zion Room, we do have our brief group. Um, so we'll be getting back to our normal schedule, meeting every second Monday at 6 p.m. Wednesday at 5.30, we have a worship team meeting. And Saturday from 9.30 to 12, we do have our council retreat in the fellowship hall. So this is an opportunity for council to get together at the beginning of the year to set some goals and to talk about what um, they feel God is leading them to this year. So hold our council in your prayers as they set out to do this work Saturday. Next Sunday, we have choir practice at 9 a.m. And then after worship, we have unhanging of the greens. So the time is almost here to pack away all of our beautiful decorations we could use your help. Stay as you are able. I think we're just going to do as much as you can. If you need to run, no problem. Um, hopefully, we'll get things packed up. Usually, packing up goes quicker than setting up. Um, so please join us after worship next Sunday. Um, looking at a couple other announcements, we do want folks to sign up for our 2024 ministry teams. So if you are currently serving on a team and want to continue serving on that team, let me know. If there's any changes that you would like to make, also let me know that. And if there's a team that you would like to join this year, feel free to sign up for that. We do have a sign-up sheet in the back of the sanctuary on one of our entry tables where you can make additions and corrections and that kind of thing. So take a look at that if you're serving on a team and want to make any adjustments for the upcoming year. We do want to thank everyone who served on our teams in 2023. Um, it's because of your leadership that we are able to do this ministry, and so we are so grateful for your service. We also have a draft of our 2024 directory available in the back for you to make any updates or corrections to. If everyone could too, just like double check your information and then put a check mark next to your name so I know that it's correct before we print them. Um, that would be a big help. That's in the back as well. On Thursday, January 18th at 11 a.m., our Golden Friends Senior Ministry is going to have a calendar planning session to kind of map out the year ahead. We would love for you to join us and share some ideas for what you would like to see happen. And then our third Sunday lunch this month is going to be at Wheatley's, nice and close, just in case there's any weather issues or anything like that. Um, so we'll be there the third Sunday. And since we've been there as a church last, Sweet Tea's Cottage Bakery has moved in there. Um, so they had been at the Dream Maker of Wanamaker building, and now they're in Wheatley's. And so they serve up some delicious desserts. They've been practicing with donuts and stuff like that. So a great addition to our lunch. We're also looking for someone who can help organize our third Sunday lunches for February and March while Becky is in Florida. So if you're interested in helping pick a place, get RSVPs if needed, and that kind of thing, do let me know. Or if you have any ideas of where you'd like to go to lunch, let me know and I can pass that along too. 
Then in January, on the 25th, which is the, a Thursday, from 12 to 6, we have our January flood drive. So this year, we are hoping to do flood drives quarterly. Those dates have been published already. Um, so if you would like to donate, do sign up. You can sign up through the link on our website at zionuccnd.net slash flood drive. I did hear from our coordinator, Jennifer, this week, um, and she expressed her gratitude for all the work that we've done here at Zion to help with the drives the past year. It's been a really great opportunity for us to use our facilities in order to serve our community. And I know so many different folks from Zion participated in the drives as well. Um, and Jennifer did confirm that we helped save up to 150 lives through our flood drives with as many um, pints as we were able to collect. So thank you all so much for that. And finally, we do want to welcome Anita and Greg Law back to staff as they serve as our custodians. Uh, we're excited to have them back with all the experience that they have. So welcome back and thank you for your willingness to serve. Uh, a big thanks to all of our volunteers who helped out while we were in between positions looking for someone. Um, I know lots of folks helped out in all kinds of ways and we're so grateful for that. Those are the announcements I have for you today. Let us turn our hearts now in worship to our wondrous God as we welcome the light of Christ among us this day. Martha is going to start us off with our prelude, We Three Kings. over you. 
Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you, your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise at Tiffany Carol, we three kings. worship this day, to be in the presence of God here in this place, at home, wherever it is that we are worshiping this day. Let us now turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. 
God of glory and grace, shine upon our worship with your presence. Shine in our hearts with your love. Shine in our lives with your grace, that we may arise with confidence and go forth from our worship this day to bring your justice and love to all. God, we give you thanks that in this new year we can gather as your people to worship, to welcome our 2024 council, to be inspired by the light of Christ. God, as we come to you, we give you thanks, too, that you hear our prayers. You know the joys in our hearts, and you know those things that weigh heavy, too. God, we lift up to you those prayers spoken just a few moments ago. For people we love dearly who are going through some hard and trying things in these moments, who are longing for your healing care and your comfort, for your encouragement and for your grace. God, pour out that spirit of healing love upon them. And God, we lift up to you prayers of thanksgiving for your healing touch, for good news that we've been longing to hear, for your presence among us and for the gift of Christ in our lives this day. God, help us to lift up our voices in worship and praise and the goodness of your light and your love. We lift up to you these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would now like to invite our 2024 council members to come forward for our installation. And a big thank you to our 2023 council members for their service. So everyone from 2023 is staying on in 2024, except Mindy. Um, and we are so grateful for all of Mindy's work as she served as our financial secretary, which is a big, time-consuming job. And so a special thank you to Mindy. 2024 council members. So our 2024 council will consist of Nathan Law as president, Michelle Van Dyke as Vice President, Debbie Hamlet as Secretary, Terry Bennett as Treasurer, Cindy Yenna as Financial Secretary, and Greg Law as Buildings and Grounds. Affirmation of Ministry is the act whereby a local church in the United Church of Christ recognizes the diverse gifts of its members and celebrates the particular ministry of each person in the life of the church. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same God is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to each of us for our particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. The scriptures teach us that Christ is like a single body, which has many parts. It is still one body, even though it is made up of different parts. If one part of the body suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is praised, all the other parts share its happiness. All of us are Christ's body, and each one is part of it. Those folks that you see up here today have been called by God in accordance with the faith and order of this church to serve among us. They have accepted their call and before us in witness 
witness to their willingness to serve. Sisters and brothers in Christ, it is an honor to be entrusted with responsibility for particular service in the ministry of the church, whether gathered or scattered. Have you prayerfully considered the duties and responsibility of your ministry? Are you prepared to serve with the help of God in Christ's name and for the glory of God? If so, you say, I am. Amen. Do you promise to exercise your ministry diligently and faithfully, showing forth the love of Christ? If so, we say, I do, relying on God's grace. I do, relying on God's grace. And now, members of this household of faith, our congregation gathered here, you have heard the promises of our brothers and sisters in Christ who have answered God's call to serve. Let us affirm our intention to live in covenant with them. Please give witness to the commitment that we make now. You're invited to repeat after me. We gather in celebration, yes. of, the that of the joy that is ours to be partners with you in the service of Jesus Christ. We promise to love you, honor your leadership, and assist you that together we may be a faithful church of Jesus Christ. Thank you all for sharing your witness. You're invited now to grab the laminated card in your pew as we say together the mission statement of Zion United Church of Christ, remembering the call that God has given to us in this ministry. Let us join together. United by Christ's loving embrace, a welcoming light in an unsure world, we serve and enrich the community and provide a safe gathering space for fellowship, spiritual growth, and self-exploration. Friends, let us pray. Eternal God, you have called these people to serve you in this household of faith and in the world, which you have entrusted us to your care and keeping. Send your Holy Spirit upon them that they may serve among us with honor and faith. Help them to be diligent in their duties, that your church may prosper in the mission you place before it. May their example prove worthy for all of us to follow, as we are united in Christ's ministry. To the glory of your name, amen. Friends, in the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the people of Zion United Church of Christ, I rejoice to announce that you are installed to your respective positions for the 2024 Council. Thank you so much for your willingness to serve and all that you already do for our church. We turn now to our Exploring God's Word Together for All Ages moment. And today I would like to introduce you to an epiphany prayer practice known as Star Words. So star, like the star that guided the Magi to Jesus. This practice has been growing in popularity over the last several years, and I thought that we would try it out here at Zion. The idea comes from the epiphany story of the Magi following the star to Jesus. God guided the Magi through that bright, shining star, and when they followed it, they found a wondrous gift. God guides us through our prayer life and offers us a wondrous gift of God's light among us when we strengthen that tie that binds us to our God. The star word of prayer practice is this idea that you pick out a word, they're up here, that will be a guide for you in your prayer life. 
you'll come forward and choose one of the words at random. If the word that you pick really, really does not resonate with you, after worship, you are welcome to come up and pick another word. We're not going to force you to sit with a word that doesn't speak to you. But I'd like to encourage you to hold on to this word, at least for this season of epiphany that we are in, from now until we enter the season of Lent. But there are some people who engage this practice and hold on to their star word all year long. I printed them on this card stock so you can use it as a bookmark in your Bible or in your journal. You can stick it on your fridge or in your wallet, someplace that you will see it often and be reminded to turn to God in prayer. So you're invited to come forward now and pick a star word and then I will explain a little bit more about this practice once you return to your seats. And if you would like someone to bring a star word to you, just raise your hand. So you're invited to come forward now and pick out a star word. For those who are worshiping with us online, if you would like a star word, I would be happy to pick one out for you. Just say something in the comments that you would like one, and I will pick one out and make sure that you get it. So just let us know. And for folks who receive our mailing, we already sent one to them in the mailing. interesting what these words are. So there are different ways that we might think of our star word practice theologically. The Magi followed a star, which led them to Jesus. And our creative prayer practice, such as meditating on a star word, can also lead us closer to Jesus. We trust that God speaks to us in many ways as we seek God's presence in our lives, and a star word can help us to look for God in our midst, to change our perspective and focus our attention amid all the distractions of daily life. In our prayer, we strive to balance our speaking with our listening. A star word gives us an opportunity to listen deeply and hear God in a new way. In being given a star word that's chosen randomly, we are receiving a gift over which we have no control. With this gift, we are invited to receive God's grace and let go of our striving to do, to act, or to take over. So here are some ideas of how you might pray with your star word. The first one is that you can look up the definition of the word, even if you know it well. So there are some kind of obscure words in here. Maybe you got one of those, and you do for sure need to look it up. And there are other ones that may be familiar, but taking a look at the different definitions can give us some new insight. 
You can learn about the origin of the word. What culture might it come from? And how has its meaning changed over time? You might also think about what does this word bring to mind as you contemplate it? Does it recall any memories for you? How might God be speaking to you through the feelings and stories that this word evokes? You might look up a word or a, the word or a synonym for it in the Bible. What does the scripture tell you? Does this word remind you of other passages? And finally, you can write prayers using this word and pray with this word regularly. Like I said, there are folks who keep their star word all year long, and so throughout the year they are on the lookout for things that remind this of, them of this word or that gives them insight into this word. This is a way to try out something new in our prayer life, something different, to be intentional throughout the year about seeking after God's light. So I hope this is an interesting practice for you this year. Would anyone like to share what word they got? Great. Generosity. Generosity. Tim. Awake. What was that? Awake. Awake. Let go. Let go. <laughs> That's a challenging one right there. Very much so. Mine is explore. I'm excited to do some exploring this year. Anyone else want to share? Cindy. Resist. Resist. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Debbie. Be. Be. What does it mean to simply be? Okay. Let's lift up a prayer for these words. God, we acknowledge that we are not always ready to receive your best gifts for us. You have given us an epiphany word in order that our searching will bring us to you. It is often our habit to turn aside, stumble over, or even reject experiences and encounters that we later understand to have been precious gifts. God, help us to be open to the gift that you offer us now through our star words. We acknowledge that we do not fully understand what this word might mean for our faith, but we receive it from you with gratitude and pray that your spirit will enable us to live into our word with intention and faithfulness. Amen. I'd like to invite Craig Miller to come forward and share with us the story of the Magi. And you are invited to hold your star word in your heart and mind as you listen for what God is speaking you, speaking to you this day through this holy word. Scripture today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard, heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah is to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are no, by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For whom, or from, for from you shall come a ruler, who is to be shepherd of my people Israel. When Herod secretly called for his wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, 
Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went, went the star that they had been seeing its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was to be born. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thank you, Greg. Let us pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we give you thanks that your light shines among us this day. We give you thanks that through your holy scriptures, your word is made known to us. God, guide this time of study that we have together, that it might spark a new light in us. And may the words of your servant be ever faithful. Amen. So I am not big on New Year's resolutions that quickly fall to the wayside. I've done that before, where I set up these big expectations and lofty goals, only to feel like a failure come the end of January when all of my big plans have not panned out. I do, however, believe that goals and taking on nurturing practices is important, especially when it comes to our spiritual life. It's important to find practices that resonate for us and feed our spirits, and sometimes that means that we need to try out new things when past practices become stagnant and no longer serve us. I hope that this new practice of Star Words might spark something in you and pique your interest in searching for those things that will lead you closer to Christ in this new year. There is something, though, about the new year that does lend itself to turning a page in life or starting fresh. Sometimes the new year can be taken as an opportunity to welcome something enriching into our lives or letting go of that which no longer serves us. There can be something exciting as we look forward with hope and possibility for what the days and months ahead may hold. I imagine the Magi journeyed with excitement as they followed that newly risen star in the sky that was guiding them to this new and wondrous thing. I don't know about you, but I do get a thrill from the excitement of seeking out a new destination, of going on a journey as Herod schemed to mercilessly hold on to his power. On the one hand, the Magi were about to encounter God's love incarnate, this newborn king who would radically change our world. But on the other hand, those long-established powers threatened to extinguish this mark and found. Each of us has a path to travel that leads us to the overwhelming joy we know in the light and love of Christ. In this new year that is ahead, we don't know exactly where this journey will take us. But if we keep our eyes set on the star that God has placed before us, those things that guide us closer to Christ, surely they will make the journey worth it. There's a story I came across about different paths that we take, a reminder that wherever our journey takes us, it can be one filled with the wondrous love of God, even when it doesn't look like the ideal that we imagine. Here's how the story goes. Once upon a time, long ago, a young man decided to become a saint. He left his home, family, and possessions, and journeyed into the hot sands of the desert where eventually he found a dark cave. 
He thought, I can find God here. I will be alone and nothing will disturb me. He prayed day and night in the cave, but God sent him many temptations. He imagined all the good things in life and wanted them desperately, but he was determined to give up everything and be alone with God, exactly as saints should do, he thought. After many months, the temptation stopped, and the young man was alone with God. Then one day, God called to him, Leave your cave and go to a distant town. Look for the local shoemaker, knock on his door, and stay with his family for a few days. The holy hermit was puzzled by God's request, but nonetheless left the next morning. He walked across the desert sands, and by nightfall he had reached the village. He found a small house, knocked on the door, and was greeted with a smile and a welcome. The hermit inquired if the man was the local shoemaker, and hearing that he was, the hermit was pleased. But the shoemaker, seeing that the hermit was tired and hungry, invited him to stay. The hermit was given a hearty meal with a clean place to sleep. The hermit stayed with the shoemaker and his family for three days. The two men talked quite a bit, and the hermit learned much about the shoemaker. But he revealed little about himself, even though the family was quite curious about him. After three days, the hermit said goodbye to the shoemaker and his family and walked back across the desert to his cave, wondering all the while why God had sent him on this mission. When he arrived back at the cave, God questioned the hermit. What was the shoemaker like? The hermit answered, he's a simple man. They have a small house. He has a wife and a baby. They seem to love each other greatly. He has a small shop where he makes shoes. He works very hard and makes very little, but he still gives money and food to those who are less fortunate. He and his wife pray each day. They have lots of friends. God listened to the hermit and replied, You will be a great saint as you wish, but the shoemaker and his family will be great saints as well. The legend of Saint Anthony in the desert describes that saint, what sainthood is all about, namely leading a life of holiness. This story reminds us that there are many paths that lead us to life enriched by Christ's light. We may have expectations of what our spiritual lives and our journeys should look like, but sometimes God leads us down a different kind of path than the one we anticipated. If we keep our eye on the stars that lead us to Christ, the journey will have been worth it. In this new year, seek out those guiding lights that will nurture and nourish your spirits and draw you closer to Christ. Be open to the surprises that the journey may hold. Welcome the possibilities that God is placing before you, because you might just find overwhelming joy in the process. May God's blessings be upon you in this new year as you follow your star. Amen. You're invited to turn now to hymn number 243, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, number 243, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise.
through Jesus Christ, the light of the world born among us. We turn now to Christ's table to receive the Christ grace, Christ light, and Christ love. Hopefully on your way in, you were able to grab a communion cup on your way in. And for those who are worshiping with us at home, you are welcome to use whatever you have on hand to represent the bread and the cup. Friends, follow the star to the table of grace. Here we find gifts beyond price. Follow the star to the table of blessing. Here we find strength for the journey. Follow the star to the table of peace. Here we find rest and refreshment. Follow the star to the table of Christ. Here we find light and love. Let us prepare our hearts to receive this wondrous gift as we turn to God to confess our sins and to receive God's grace. Let us pray. Merciful God, grant us the grace to behold your glory and offer us the assurance of your loving light. Grant us the confidence that we too can shine your light in our world. God, remove the lampshades of fear and shame that hide our light. Dust off the cobwebs of doubt and despair and that shadow our light. Shine in us and through us that your light might brighten our world. Amen. Friends, here is the mystery. Grace is ours no matter what. God's love is ours no matter what. Grace and love save us and shine in us. They allow us to shine as the light of the world with the light of the world. Thanks be to God for God's transformative grace and mercy. Amen. We remember that on the night when Jesus was to be betrayed, he gathered with his friends in the upper room. After the Passover meal was over, Jesus took the bread that was left, and he blessed it and broke it, and told his friends that this was his body broken for them. Afterwards, he took the cup, the fruit of the vine, and pouring it out, he told them that this was the cup of the new covenant. His blood shed for them and the forgiveness of sins. As often as they would eat this meal, they were to remember him. Today we remember Christ's holy presence at this table. Let us bless these gifts that God's presence might be made known in them. Let us pray. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that we may be your light in the world. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be filled with your glory. Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, take now and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Likewise, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, Christ's blood shed for you, and the forgiveness of sins. Let us offer our thanks to God. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence and the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, having been fed and nourished, we rise from the table and turn now to ponder the ways that we might bring our gifts to God in thanksgiving, we turn now to our time of offering. 
As we gaze on the lights of the Christmas season, may we remember the light that draws near. Like those wise travelers from the East, let us bring our gifts and treasures to honor Christ, the light of the world. As you bring your gifts this day, you are invited to place them in the basket in the back. You can mail them into the office, or you can donate online at zionuccindnet slash donate, where you will find our PayPal donate button. We are so grateful for the gifts that you bring and that we can sustain this ministry that Christ has called us to as we seek to serve and enrich God's beloved. Our January Benevolence Offering will go to support the, the Emergency Assistance Fund that we have here at Zion. So those funds are used when folks call the office, send me a Facebook message, email me, contact me, however, in order to receive assistance when they are facing hard and challenging times. We get requests for things like food and diapers, for gas, or maybe for a place to stay for the night as someone is passing through town. And your donations to the Emergency Assistance Fund allows me to say yes when folks come to our church seeking care and support rather than having to turn them away. Last year, we did use up a huge portion of our emergency assistance fund, so we are basically kind of back to um, point zero at our fund, so we could definitely use your help um, so that we can serve our neighbors as they turn to us. So do consider supporting the emergency assistance fund. Let us lift up our gifts
shine with light, the light of Christ's love. Go forth to shine with the glory of Christ's grace. Go forth to shine with the justice and peace of Christ's life. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.